Morning, man. Kerry, Tyrone, obviously, is going to be our first port of call with you. Forgetting about the pairings this weekend to kick things off, what's your power ranking of the teams that are most likely uh, to beat Dublin of those that are left? Uh, Kerry, Mayo, Tyrone. Right. Is that your Tyrone as outsiders here is, has uh, surprised me, I have to say. It's, it's, it's very close. Like I'm, I can't wait to see Mayo v Dublin this weekend. I think Mayo, if if Mayo turn up with all their mayo if, if <laughs> that should become a word. If it's not a word, it should become a word. Uh, if they turn up with all of that, I think they can really, really rattle Dublin and, and they could pull off the win. Uh, Kerry, for me, on what I've seen so far, albeit the Meath game raised a few old issues, uh, but from what I've seen discounting that Meath game, I think Kerry have the forward line and, and the players to take on uh, Dublin. David Moore has found his leadership uh, and his form in midfield. And defensively, they've looked much more solid in a number of games this year. Uh, much more uh, clued in in terms of really physical tackles back there. Now, against me, that seemed to lessen somewhat, although they, they did seem to change around their defence a wee bit for the Meath game, so I'm not 100% sure it'll be very interesting to see what defence comes out against Tyrone. Uh, but look, all all three teams outside of Dublin could beat each other, uh, and all three of them would fancy their chances against Dublin. So as to who can do that, well, who really knows? But if I was to say at this stage, I would, I would probably fancy Kerry most. Yeah, so what, well, that doesn't mean that you don't think Tyrone are obviously uh, going to lose this weekend. Where where are you at on this Tyrone group? And like the obviously consistency that they've shown over the last few years, which you'd have to accept given the depths that they've gone to in the All Ireland Championship, um, could point to a team that are building up to something and have shown maybe a bit more uh, dynamism potentially this this season. So is is that the case that they've they're they're continuing to evolve and they are going to evolve into a team that are ultimately going to go on and win the All Ireland or have we seen the ceiling of this Tyrone group? Yeah, that is that is the key question. Like the whole thing about evolution and the whole thing of teams building up to something and development pathways. I, I have to be truthful, I'm I'm not a huge believer in that. I can certainly see it in evidence, but for me, teams that are going to go and win stuff age shouldn't really matter and 21 22 you, you you should be there punching above your weight if if that's going to be your your future uh carry are going to be coming in this year a much younger profile team than thrown much less of them years of development under their belt uh, can they upset throne i certainly can see it but tr this is this group's uh, this is a watershed moment for throne i've done a piece in the Irish news and looking back over the last 10 years Throne have played these top teams. I'm talking Mayo, Dublin and Kerry. Eight times. They have lost all eight times since the 2008 all Ireland, where, of course, we beat Mayo, Kerry and Dublin en route to that all Ireland title. So Throne haven't beat any of them big dogs in this past 10 years. This current group have reached all Ireland semi-finals and all Ireland finals by avoiding them essentially in a draw. Now, in them years, Mayo have been weak and could have been taken. Kerry definitely have been weak and could have been taken if Throne came across them, but they didn't. So that challenge is still there. Throne need to be able to take down a top, top team. This last four, for me, are the top four teams in GA over the past 10 years. Uh, Throne are in that group, but have never taken down another member of that group, whereas all the other teams have done that. So for this Throne group, uh, Sunday is a massive, massive test for them. Uh, they're against a, a, a Kerry team I rate very highly. But I think Tyrone have, have the qualities and the setup that are going to massively test that Kerry team. And to be honest, I'm still going down as a Tyrone supporter and I would still fancy your chances, even though I'm sort of tipping Kerry, I, I tend to go with the team with just the best forwards because often in tight games or games that are close to call, it's the forwards that win out. Uh, but Tyrone have the defence to really shackle that carry forward line or at least ask some questions that hasn't been asked before but the biggest thing is that throne mindset have they the ability as a group to seize their moment and not be usurped or passed over by a carry team that's only coming uh, on ground that's only clock starting to clock up the miles compared to the throne team that have been on that hard road for several years so throne for me this is a watershed moment for this group uh, they can certainly do it but it's going to be a tough one 
Declan Bogan, the Irish Examiner, this morning was saying that he heard from somebody very well connected to the Tyrone camp that after the second Super 8s game this summer, all he could hear in Tyrone training was Kerry, 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 Kerry. It's the one game they've been focused on, the one team that they've been focused on. And I presume this isn't any news to you and this is something that Mickey Hart tends to do quite well, this singular focus on an opposition, especially when it's Kerry. Look, Kerry hold a very special place in the Tyrone, uh, in the Tyrone GA mindset. Uh, they are a team that... We were raised on their stories. Uh, all of us were raised on them. <laughs> them Kerry Golden Years DVDs. All our parents are, look at Kerry through rose tinted glasses. And so, for any young player in Throne, Kerry are the be all and end all, more so than Dublin. Uh, Kerry defeated us in the 1986 All Ireland final in a manner that left us all. Uh, just left that imprint on our minds and w you've seen that in 2003 you've seen that sort of player the group of players that I was a part of uh, that was our watershed moment that had everything in us as footballers we had to show that we counted and it had to be against Kerry Kerry are that benchmark as far as children are concerned uh, and nothing much has changed they're coming with another great group of players but it's ironic how history sort of it's not that it repeats itself, but certainly the patterns are there again. This match on Sunday has many of the same patterns, many of the same setup compared to that uh, game in 03. The difference for me is in 03 we were coming in as a very young team and Kerry were the proven team. Uh, this year, Trone are coming in as a much more experienced team, the team that has done much more development time against a fairly young Kerry team. But it, for me, it's Tyrone that is in more need of that win. It's Tyrone that has to show that savage hunger and intensity. And I'm hoping they sort of capture that and put it along with the good football that they've played at times this year. When you look at Tyrone from a tactical level, and it seems that Donegal made a fairly simple switch in their Ulster Championship game and it worked a treat. Why can't Kerry do that this weekend? What have Tyrone done to counteract that if Kerry do go down that route? Tyrone are very different from, from how they played against Donegal. So at that stage, they were still trying to largely push up uh, they hadn't uh, gone back to the pretty defensive uh, formation or, or that sort of zone, that drift defence that, that we've been accustomed to seeing in that sort of real uh, fast counter-attacking game. Uh, so Trone weren't doing that against Donegal, so any of the switches Donegal made in that game, it was primarily to stop Cahill McShane, to stop a, fair, a fairly forward pressing Trone team. Uh, and then with that, you have to allow for the fact that Trone were about 80, maybe 90% maximum that day. Uh, they were off colour off pace, their intensity levels weren't there, their tackle counts weren't there, their kick-out system, especially against Donegal's kick-out, all malfunctioned. So, if uh, for Mickey Hart and for Throne, if Kerry are going on that Donegal uh, performance and looking at what Donegal did, that would be perfect from a Throne point of view because it'll bear no resemblance to the Throne that Kerry faced uh, on, on Sunday. For me, Kerry have to manage and mitigate against Cahill McShane and, and Matty Donnelly at full forward. I think that has to have some form of a sweeper in there along with two really strong designated man markers. Uh, they have to be able to nullify the likes of Niall Sludd and Petey Hart coming from the middle. Uh, and with that, they then have to look at their own attacking game plan and they have to be prepared for a much more physical and uh, crowded defence for their forwards to attack into and move. Now they have the ability to move their, their interplay between them forwards. Them forwards are of massive quality. I love watching that carry forward line play. Their interplay is brilliant. They're going to need that to be as slick and as sharp and precise as possible and as fast as possible. They have to be prepared to take the hits, but also be patient. If they do all of that, and that's a lot for a young team to take on, uh, but if they can do that, then, then they have the ability to unlock Drone's defence as well. And just a final one on this game, and just very briefly, who do you think will be the two men from Tyrone who will mark Clifford and O'Shea, and who do you think will be the two men from Kerry to mark Donnelly and McShane? So for Tyrone, uh, Mark and Clifford and O'Shea, I think you've got Ronan McNamee, and hopefully, uh, I'd be certainly hoping Padraig Hampshire is now ready to, to come back in there uh, and, and take on them man marking duties. For Kerry, I think Ty Morley has been a key man for them. I think he'll be in there, possibly somebody as physically strong as Shane Enright. They've carried have quite a few smaller and lighter defenders, uh, and I don't think you can put one of them up. I, th I think it has to be one of your older and stronger defenders in against McShane, and if Donnelly is in there, I'd say from a carry point of view, they're hoping that maybe only McShane's in there 
rather than having McShane and Donnelly in there. And I suppose that's the big question for Mickey Hart. Does he go all out right from the start and go with that? That works so well against Cork. Uh, but that, that would be Kerry's bit of an issue. Like the likes of Gavin White, the likes of Paul Murphy, brilliant, brilliant defenders, but not of the stature of the suitability to, to mark physically big, big men. Uh, they carry struggle a wee bit with me uh, with with that so uh, that is a, a major cause of concern for Peter King but I, I'm sure I think Ty Morley will certainly take one although I wasn't impressed with him against me uh, and who takes the other you're probably looking at maybe deploying somebody like Shane Enright or maybe even Tom Griffin somebody like that uh, from the bench yeah, we'll see how all that pans out. And the, David Moore was a player you mentioned earlier on as well. Uh, in terms of trying to nullify his thread, players having a brilliant season. We'll see how all that pans out. It is uh, eight thirty-three on this Friday morning. Delighted to say Stephen Rochford joins us on the line as well. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good morning, Les. How are you doing? Flying it. You've seen both of these uh, two carry a Tyrone up front this year. What way are uh, you edging this one? Yeah, um, yeah. I had first time experience of both teams. Um, I think it's going to be extremely tight. Um, I think, uh, you know, as Enda's alluded to there, the, the Kerry forward line is, you know, it, it's probably the, the, the one forward line on farm that, that can sort of be measured up against uh, uh, what, what, what Dublin probably bring. Um, but I, I also think that Tyrone have been, you know, steadily building from, obviously, from, from, from the Donegal game uh, back in May. Um, their form coming out of the league, I think, was probably the, the, the best form of, of any of the teams. Uh, through that, those last four games, and I think they're, they're moving back towards towards that sort of form and and level of consistency. And um, I do think that 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 their their run through the qualifiers presents them with with sort of not as harder opposition to sort of get a, a rhythm and a confidence back in in their play. Um, and I think as, again, as Enda has alluded to, it's the sort of the physical element of of what their defenders can bring in the likes of. Brennan, uh, McNamee in relation to Hamsey being back, Kieran McCann, um, a lot of seasons, a lot of experienced physical defenders, um, and and really it, it'll be around. I think as much around how Kerry are able to adapt to that. If they're if they if, they, if they're comfortable with it, I think that they can they can certainly win the game. Um, uh, otherwise, I think it will be uh, it could be Tyrone for, for more for believing than um, anything right. else. Okay. We asked Andy at the top just to power rank the other three, I suppose we'll phrase them that way, in terms of the teams that are left and the most likely to beat Dublin. What's your take on it? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, you know, there, there, there's not much between numbers two, two to four. Um, I think, you know, based, based on form, you'd probably go maybe Kerry two, Mayo just on their experience, maybe three in Tyrone at four, but... I think you know at any at any given day those numbers can change, and you could see Tyrone at two and Mayo down to four. So it's it's really it's really really tight in in, in that sense. Um, but uh, you know, I just I just have a feel that that they, that if Terry come and they sort of had their um, they've also been steady building since, since the Cork game. They understand what Tyrone will bring and whether it'll be their. Their, their, their game plan with the with the numbers in the in behind with Colin McShane up front, or will they, you know, will they will, will they change it up a little bit and push Matty Stanley a little bit more forward and leave Petey Hart a little bit more advanced in the middle third of the field? They may do so, but that will then obviously provide the carry forward with that little bit more space and probably early on you you won't see that happening. Stephen, I think one of the things we all missed from the 2018 Championship was the lack of a Dublin versus Mayo heavyweight clash in the, the business end of the summer. When you're going to look at the game tomorrow evening, do you reckon that you're going to see a similar sort of setup to what you implemented in 2017? Um, yeah, I, I, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, I think, but um, you know, you know, haven't haven't seen Mayo, you know, very much up close over the uh, 16 to, to 18 years, and again last last weekend. Um, they certainly have the bit between their teeth. Um, you know, haven't haven't been in communication with a couple of the players this week. I certainly know that they're absolutely looking forward to to, to the the occasion, looking forward to to, 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 to the challenge that it, that it certainly is. They also understand that it's a very, um, you know, it's a massive challenge. The the, the form that Dublin are in, um, you know, suggests that you know it may all up against us, but. The bigger the challenge, the bigger the occasion, but the more the best that, that, that Mayo group uh, 
uh, step up to it. So um, I do think that there's a couple of things that probably need to go Mayo's way. Um, and, you know, this would suggest that in those contests, you know, that they, we haven't been able to sort of generate uh, our own luck in, in those occasions. But I think, you know, we certainly will need a bit of it uh, in, in order to get across the line tomorrow. What on what percentage would you base your? I, I want to I want to say relative success a, against Dublin. The, I know that sounds patronising because they didn't end in uh, wins, but in comparison to every other team, it's relative success against Dublin. To what percent do you put that down to excellent man marking and uh, excellent selection of matchups? Um, no, look, it, it it certainly would be a case of of, of um, uh, players. Uh, you know, if they got their tats really really sticking to it. Um, you know, I think on on, on any given day uh, in, in in the in the sixteen seventeen final, you had a case whereby you know you had defenders and the forward, you know, really going toe to toe, and it was you know fifty fifty call in relation to maybe who who, who got um, you know who won the the, the, the key battle in there, um, and I do think that that is ultimately that is the key in relation to um, uh, you know taking on Dublin is being able to. Uh, have enough trust in in your defensive uh, unit, you know. And that, and defensive unit isn't just the six guys; it is, you know, probably two, three, or forwards providing some protection, slowing the the counter attack or the, the the transition fast transition play that Dublin have, um, and your two midfielders. How they all prevent trust. Ultimately, you, you do look at you know the the, the Paddy Durkin, the, the the Lee Keegan, the Cullen Boyd, the Higgins, Ben Harrison, Chris Barrett. Um, Donald Vaughan, Stephen Cohen, all those guys have been um, detailed a, a job in it, and, and each and every one of them ha, ha, has been able to, to, to provide, sort of, I suppose, some level of success in those in those matchups. And um, you know, it's it, it's a crucial part in relation to uh, whether Mayo can be successful tomorrow or not. When you're deciding that Lee Keegan is going to mark your uncle Kenny in 2017, Stephen, is that a dialogue between yourself and Lee? Does he come up with a suggestion? Do you come up with a suggestion, or how does that work? No, well, I think you know, you know, up to that, up to that game, you know, Lee, Lee, and Jeremy Conley had really got to know each other, mm. um, and in, in in 2017, obviously, Jeremy hadn't played the uh, sort of through the championship due to due to the suspension, and you know, we were proud, you know, we were pretty confident that uh, he wasn't going to start the game. Um, and then you sort of look at who is the most influential player, and you know if you only took the the Tyrone game in, in the context, you know who handled the ball more, who sets the pace, who's the main decision maker, who will have the most assists. You know it, 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 you know it, it sort of became a, it didn't become a discussion. It just says, Kieran Kenny makes that that, that forward line tick uh, back in twenty seven. Does he have the same amount of influence now? Possibly not. I think maybe Brian Fenton and certainly Brian Howard and uh, and Niles Scully provide every bit more, um, you know, sort of ammunition or, or whatever it is for, for, for the inside line. But certainly back in 2017, um, you know, Kieran Kenny was, was the guy that was really making them tick. Like, obviously, been a lot made about the sort of Dublin turnaround. Not a huge amount of sympathy, I suppose. Probably should put that caveat in there. Uh, but the Dublin turnaround. But uh, no, James Horn, after the game last weekend, uh, specifically checked the Mayo work rate. He spoke about, I think it was 12 of the 15, 50, 50 balls they'd won in the first half um, and, and talked a lot about the work rate. How difficult is it for Mayo then to have to back that up, albeit with an extra day's turnaround? How difficult is them, particularly against a team like, like Dublin, to have to back that up? Yeah, um, I think, look, look. The, the, the first thing that the game will have done last week is that, you know, I, I think, you know, Mayo coming into the game, they certainly would have believed that they could get a big performance and that they had the, the players that could go, um, you know, go in and sort of physically dominate in certain sectors. And what the result would have given is, is, is to sort of give the confidence to that belief. Um, we also, you know, have got the experience of being able to go to a throw with Dublin um, that hasn't happened though, I suppose, nearly in 24 months. So, you know, the measure will be really, you know, are Mayo still, you know, in that position to be able to go towards to have, have Dublin moved on? And that's something I think we're all wondering about that, that, that you know, out of the 2018 championship, I think there's a, there's a wide sense of maybe weren't, they weren't tested enough. Uh, in, in relation, coming back though to, to your, your question in relation to Mayo, um, I think that they don't have a choice. They just have to. Um, 
you know, and, and, and uh, um, I think that the chat will be around that, like, you know, they won't be in any way feeling sorry for themselves. You know, it's a seven-day turnaround. They've done it in the past. Um, and I think just the the, the, the the whole intrigue of, of and, and the challenge and, and the getting back to Crow Park, all those bits will just really ignite um, their, their own self-belief to be able to go and have a real good crack at, uh, at Dublin. And I don't think you'll hear anything in, you know, in relation to, you know, tiredness or, or, or anything in relation to that. Everybody knows what the fixture is. They just get out now and, and, and they go about doing their work. And uh, who are you targeting this weekend if you're involved in the Mayo management? Is there, say, if Kilkenny was the man in 2017, is he still the man? Is, are you detailing Lee Keegan on somebody else or how are you looking at it? Yeah, I think Kieran Kilkenny is still obviously up there. Uh, but for me, I suppose the two standout players for Dublin is uh, Jack McCaffrey and Brian Fenton. Uh, I just hope, um, rubbing my hands at the very thought of Paddy Durkin on, on Jack McCaffrey, I thought Paddy Durkin's performance last week against Ryan McHugh was absolutely stunning. He literally had Ryan McHugh, I never thought I would see it, but he had Ryan McHugh, I've seen it a couple of times off screen, I was watching on TV and it was just off screen where Paddy Durkin was charging forward and Ryan McHugh was just trailing in his wake, just floundering, he was beat. Uh, Durkin, of course, scored the three points. McHugh was largely anonymous now. It was within a disjointed Donegal display, but Durkin was just phenomenal. His his pace and his fitness, uh, his strength, his physicality, everything was was just absolutely top of top top of what you'd want to see. So him and Jack McCaffrey would be phenomenal. And McCaffrey does so much at times to puncture holes in otherwise tight team defences where teams are really sort of up against Dublin and really giving Dublin their fill. Suddenly McCaffrey breaks away and creates something or punctures a wee hole that suddenly creates a wee bit of panic and then the, uh, Dublin get a score. And then Brian Fenton, what what can you say? Like Again, I was watching it uh, against Roscommon. Roscommon at the start, as most teams do again, Dublin were, were half competing with them. Uh, Roscommon had done a big job, obviously, on Cluxton's kickouts were pushed up, there was no options on, I was watching from the Cusick stand, there was no options on right across, which was very rare from a Dublin point of view. So Cluxton just pinned it on top of Brian Fenton, it was a purely 50-50 ball and Fenton won it. Uh, so again, those two players, even when opposition have really Dublin on the rack, them two players can either be ball winners or sort of pointed uh, thrusts into the opposition defence that, that create the holes and suddenly create a, a Dublin foothold again. So somehow may have, have to go against that but and Paddy Durkin and the likes of Aidan O'Shea or Shea O'Shea they have men there that are that would will probably relish that task uh, so again Mayo do have this uh, type of team that when you look across the matchups they have the right sort of talent and crucially they have a big game a big battle mentality they seem to relish the bigger game no no more so than, than them games on the rock and uh, Stephen uh, that level of intensity Mayo can bring it and Dublin know that so uh, for me yeah it's, it's them two Dublin players that would be watching but Mayo have the capability of doing it So you're saying Durkin on McCaffrey one of the O'Shea's on Fenton and then where are you putting Lee Keegan? Lee Keegan maybe back on Kilkenny again it's sort of any one of them forwards of, you know they've, Dublin have so many but Kilkenny you still can't ignore them and, and the, the obvious thing to happen with Dublin is that the one day that you decide that Kieran Kilkenny isn't their main man mm. and you decide not to completely try to nullify him then he will very quickly become a very prominent main man again so I think Kieran Kilkenny while I'm naming them all or two I suppose I'm trying to be different <laughs> naming them all or two Kieran Kilkenny for Dublin still is the man to make them tick and crucially whenever Dublin are on the rocks actually whenever Dublin are, are being a bit stretched and being a bit panicked and being a bit hassled it's Kilkenny that calms that down and, and controls that again for Mayo a wee bit like them famous matches that we've seen in the past they don't need this game to be calm this game needs to have that air of madness I've seen that in the press this week but it needs to be helter skelter it needs to be sort of played at a pace and played at a rhythm that is just above and beyond anything that's comfortable uh, Kieran Kilkenny is comfortable Kieran Kilkenny makes Dublin comfortable him on the ball settles Dublin uh, so Keegan hunting him around uh, would be perfect whether Lee is in full fitness uh, I'm still not 100% sure he picked up that ankle injury and yes he got back very fast from it but he's I've seen him down a couple of times in other matches where he's picked up knocks and he's just a wee bit slower to get up than Lee Keegan previously has been so whether he's at his full fitness remains to be seen but again that Mayo mentality no, 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 no better shown by the likes of Keegan Who's going to win? Will mean that he will measure up on the day. 
who's going to win tomorrow, Enda? You have to go Dublin, but the the hope the the hope burns brightly on this <laughs> one. Uh, we'll all share in Mayo's uh, seemingly endless pit of hope uh, this weekend, and 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 let's see. But the the best thing uh, would be Dublin to be truly tested, because if this Dublin team are to go on to achieve that historic five in a row, you really want to have seen them tested and really to have earned it, to really admire them properly if they do go on and prove themselves the greatest team ever. Uh, Mayo, I think, are a perfect team to start that process on, on Saturday. Mayo to knock the, sh- knock the shine out of them is what you're saying, and then Tyrone obviously <laughs> get them in the final. I wouldn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a million, Enda. No problem, man. Cheers, thanks, man. Uh, Stephen, just before we get your prediction, would you go along with what, with what Enda was saying there in terms of his thoughts on man-marking? It kind of sounds like you're leaning towards Keegan on Brian Howard, or am I putting words in your mouth there? No, no, no. I, th- I think I think actually maybe Stephen Cohen might take Brian Howard. Okay. Uh, and and I and I do think you know as, as Enda is alluding to there when, when when Dublin come under a bit of pressure there with Brian Fenton, but also I think when they when they came under a little bit of pressure against Cork, you know, having conceded the the the, 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 the goals there, uh, it was Brian Howard that, that they went to clucks and went with with, with two of those uh, longer kickouts, and that's something that they didn't have in their half forward line uh, back in 2017. Just another. Uh, another outlet if if if, um, if 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 they actually needed it, but um, the I, I think you'll probably see uh, what what what, what ended lose. I think you see Jamie O'Shea probably picking up Brian Fenton. Um, I think you'll see Lee Keegan on Kieran Kilkenny. Um, you know it's a, a sticker twist uh, option then for James in relation to does he move Paddy Durkin back into full back line where he's had some reasonable success against Paul Mannion or does he look to try and nullify? The influence of Jack McCarthy in Crow Park, which is a, I think is, is a much more daunting task than, than maybe taking up a, a Ryan McHugh in a, in a sort of dull, sort of wet, sort of tighter, uh, uh, you know, cauldron as such in, in, in Castle Bar. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. There's a, there's a lot of matchups that, 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 uh, that we're all eagerly looking to see what, what, uh, what way they play out. Um, and, and certainly it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really important that try and get those right in order to, to give yourself the fighting chance. Yeah, we might see some combination of nearly all of those things depending on how the game unfolds over the course of the uh, evening tomorrow, so we look forward to it. It's been a, a tough few days for you? Yeah, like, I mean, you know, uh, any, any, any sort of, I suppose, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, after you go out of the Championship, they're tough days, they're, they're probably mornings of, of uh, regret and what would you do better if you got the opportunity again? And, but, but in saying that, and, and probably... Because it's your own home county and a team that you, that you sort of know well, um, you're able to sort of partnerise the, the the performance. And you know, you know, I, I would say you know we just weren't good enough on the day. And sometimes you have to be just accepting of the of, of the results and, and understand that we we underperformed and um, sort of accept it and, and, and look to move on. We, you've done some of that an, an, uh, analysis, have you? In terms of here's things we could have done better, and we to come out the right side of it. Yeah, well, look. I mean, you know, it's small margins. In, in, you know, in in these games, I think you know there, 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 there's the obvious element there that you know the physicality that that that, that Mayo uh, brought to the game, and um, that that wasn't a surprise. Um, but we sort of allowed ourselves to be drawn into that and played a little bit maybe too much of the game, maybe down the middle of the field, um, and allowed Mayo to throw into that into the game and get a foothold and uh, defensively, I suppose. You know them to put their physical stamp um, and the tackle element into the game. So, you know, we probably would look to try and keep that game wider. Certainly spoke about it and a lot and, and, and try to put it in practice before we went. But I think that probably comes back to you know we played Division Two football. We hadn't even in the championship. We hadn't sort of come up against a, 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 a situation where it was a, a must-win game against a really seasoned, physical, experienced outfit. Um, and I think so. That's something that will uh, lead well into, uh, for the group going into 2020 and going f- going forward. And um, you know, still a very very young team in Donegal. I think you know we, we were sort of saying you know after we had four guys on uh, over the age of 26, and Mayo has nine guys over the age of 29. So it gives you just a sense around where Mayo are at. But there's certainly a lot of potential in in, in Donegal, and uh, and I certainly see them 
been able to take the lessons from from, from last weekend and, and, and build an honest going into 2020. Yeah, geez, a huge reason to be positive and particularly if you can keep everybody fit, obviously, is the other key aspect to it. How hard was it for you the previous week, Stephen, to be, uh, having been where you were with Mayo and ultimately, like you said, it was must win for both teams to be in the position you were in for that week. Was that tough or was it just business? Yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I felt as being more business, to be honest. Um, the, I suppose I, 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 was, uh, I was on annual leave from work and Maybe been been away from the, the sort of the familiar faces that you talk typically be talking football with at the at the water cooler moments on on Mondays and Tuesdays. And uh, I didn't find myself in that scenario and, and and sort of been away with kids for a few days here and there. Sort of allowed me probably switch off from what was coming. But, but invariably it was about you know the Stephen Rashford Mayo was always a sideshow, um, and it was about trying to to, to assist Johnny Gall to, to, to as best we best we could um, and look we came, we came up a bit short uh, on the day and um, you know there's no, no plans about that the, the, the better team just won on the day You were chasing the game was the other aspect to it, it was most games you've played uh, this season you've been ahead at half time there was maybe the, the Kerry game was the one slight exception you were only a point down at that point was that how conscious were you of that? Because certainly looking in, it felt like Donegal were always kind of chasing it. How conscious on the sideline were yourself and Declan that it was a game you were always chasing to a degree? And and the different dynamic that it presented for most of the other games you'd played this season? Yeah, it was, I suppose the, 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 you know, what you're saying is actually, actually correct. You know, we, we always found ourselves chasing the game. There was the reality in it. Um, you know, we, we, we got off to a very good start and we were two points up inside four minutes. Felt that, you know, we'd, we'd settled. But then we just you know, we, we had one mistake after another um, and we were presenting Mayo with those opportunities to, to stamp, you know, what they wanted in the game. We obviously understood that, that Mayo wanted this to be a physical game. It, it, it plays really to their to, to, to their strength. And in a tighter uh, castle bar on a wet evening, you know, we disappointed that we sort of contributed to, to, to allow Mayo to do that. But uh, as you said, Adrian, you know, we were chasing the game for, 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 for long part had got ourselves back then, you know, to a one eight to one nine situation and went on then to six seven wide. So, you know, we had opportunities maybe to take that game by the scuff of the neck and, 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 and sort of get into a lead and, and, and try and push forward and, and maybe a bit of our panic shooting, you know, in that in that uh, in that situation probably just allowed the momentum to stay back in Mayo's favour and, 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 and they deservedly won won the game. Um, I think even though so I allude to, to, to kicking the seven Seven wide in the overall. If we had got something out of the game, we, we, we would have been pretty fortunate. Did you enjoy being more of a coach this year rather than being the main manager? And do you think you'll hang around next year? Um, you know, it's it, it's something. You know, I, I have obviously coached at a third level club and um, you know, sort of underage underage level. Uh, it's something that I that, that I really enjoyed. Um, it's you know, g- getting back into that and. Um, that opportunity uh, arose, obviously, with Tony Gall, and was something that 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 I wanted to test out and 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 and, and sort of look to better myself. And um, I still think that you know there's that there's there's loads to to, to uh, improve on in that sense. There's, there's, there's loads more learning for myself as a, as a coach, and um, I I wouldn't say that that so I wouldn't see myself going back into a manager role again, but just. It, 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 that that won't be in the short term. It's, you know, there's more things that I that I want to sort of build out in in, in my understanding around what needs to be brought to to, to a full setup. And Tony Gall and the coaching aspect uh, has brought that. And um, looking forward to 2020. And um, you know, we it's it, you know Tony Gall. We will be sitting down probably in the next week or ten days, and reviewing the year and, and 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 setting out probably what the plans are for for next year. I am um, you know no decision has been uh, has been fully made on on that. But you know I wouldn't rule out. Um, you know, a return to, to, to the northwest. Very good. Well, listen, enjoy the games in a way that I'm sure you haven't been able to do over the last few months this weekend. Uh, thanks, William, for taking the call, Stephen.